We're joined by Fox NFL draft analyst Joel Klatt. Mm. Welcome back, Joel. Good, Good morning. Good, Good to morning. be here. Wow. Could you see the Browns taking Baker with the number one pick? Uh, I don't see that happening. So, no, I, I don't think Cleveland's going to go in that direction. Remember now, this organization since 2000, they've had 25 starting quarterbacks. Mm. You know, that a lot? That, that's, <laughs> that's a lot, you know, and so I think that their main charge with this draft, with the selections that they've built up, the roster that they're starting to build, in particular on the defensive side, I think that they need to do everything in their power to minimize risk, minimize risk with this first pick. And, and for me, the riskier selection or the guy that has the, the more risk associated with him is Baker versus Sam Darnold. So for Baker, you've got to look. He's not the prototypical size. No. He's obviously got an element of his game where he can let his emotions get the best of him. We saw that at, at Kansas, and he had to sit out the first series in their following contest. We've seen the fact that guys coming out of his system have struggled at times going into the National Football League. Now, we're starting to see some young quarterbacks make that transition with more success than we have in the past, but that's still a question mark. Again, that's a risk factor, and then ultimately – he is still a guy who ran away from the police on a video. Mm -hmm. That's a huge risk, risk factor. So all of those elements lead me to believe that Sam Darnold's the safer selection for Cleveland. Sam's going to get into that locker room, and he's not going to have many problems. There's not going to be as, as many distractions, in particular from the media, as you would have maybe with Baker Mayfield. Plus, you've got a guy like Sam Darnold who made all of his teammates better. Remember, he didn't have – the talent around him that Baker Mayfield did, and he went out there and won with the game on his shoulders. His offensive system, not nearly as intricate, not nearly as good, or as, as quality of a play caller as what Baker Mayfield had at Oklahoma. So for me, Darnold's the safer selection, which Cleveland desperately needs. Again, 25 starting quarterbacks since 2000. They've got to get this one right. Mm. Before, I, before I say I, don't, I, don't, I agree with you, what did you think of Darnold's workout in the rain? I loved it. I loved it. As you know, when you get shorts and a T-shirt on, you better look good, mm -hmm. right? right. <laughs> I mean, anybody, whether it's running backs, pass, right? I mean, anybody, wide receivers, quarterbacks. And so what those workouts desperately need is some element of, um, you know, disruption. And, and he had that. And thankfully for him, it began to rain and heavily. Right. And with – Mr. Haslam sitting right up in the stands, taking notes under, under an umbrella. He threw the ball as well as I've seen a quarterback throw the ball under that amount of rain in a long time. I mean, he, he had RPMs. There was velocity. It was accurate. It was very impressive. I was standing with a lot of the decision makers right there, 10, 15 feet away from Sam Darnold. And you got a lot of this, kind of looking at each other like, hey, are you seeing what I'm seeing? I think the, the decision and the selection was made that day at USC in the rain. Mm. Yeah, 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 Skip. Yeah, 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 yeah. Too. I like Sam Darnold. Um, like I said, I don't, after watching him throw the ball, I think everybody walked away impressed, okay, under this kind of duress, under what he's going through, because he could have easily, like, postponed and says it's raining today, mm. but he didn't do that. Now, Skip, if, now, I love Hugh. I know Hugh a little bit. Um, if John Dorsey had said this, who's going to ultimately make the decision on the number one pick, then I'm like, oh, okay, wow. Mm. But I don't think. And as, he, as uh, Joel said, the safer pick, and when you go pick, you don't, you know, I get it, you want to make a splash skip, but you want it to be a safe splash. Mm -hmm. And they've ha had far too many of these reaches, no matter, not necessarily the first pick, but they've reached a lot for guys in the first round, and it's come back to bite them. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, I believe Sam Darnold, and I believe with the way he threw the football mm -hmm. in his pro day, cemented it, for the Cleveland Browns that this is the guy that we want to lead us mm. in the direction that we want to and need to go. Mm. So this is just me. If, in fact, the Cleveland Browns decided while watching Sam Darnold throw in the rain that that's the reason he should be the number one overall pick, they are all wet as usual. <laughs> Because I could not care less about him throwing in the rain. I know it was gutsy and he did it for his teammates who had all yeah, prepared yeah. to be there at that moment. I get all that. But it's, it, that's the biggest bunch of baloney I've ever heard. And I'm going to say this again about Baker Mayfield. I do not believe, and I know Hugh Jackson a little bit myself, I do not believe he was smoke screening or trying to mislead teams such as the Jets, who are picking third overall in the draft, and you, you have projected Baker to the mm -hmm. Jets. 
I believe that Hughes spoke from his heart because there is a whole bunch of Pied Piper in that little man, Baker Mayfield, and you have experienced it up close yep, and personal no in personal games you have covered in Norman, Oklahoma, and other places. And I will not be shocked if Cleveland shocks the world by taking Baker number one overall. I, I believe that Hugh would lean in that direction. You may be right about John Dorsey leaning in the other. And obviously – because of the Johnny Manziel potential in Baker. He is a high-risk pick yes. for that franchise. Yes. So, now let's talk about minimizing your risk. Let's look at what actually happened last year to Sam Darnold on the football field. The first year he started, he went 31 touchdowns to nine interceptions. He started, what, was it the second game he started in? He, yeah. he didn't start the, the first fourth game. The fourth game is, is when he ultimately when he started, got the starting started going, job, okay. yeah. So, but 31 touchdowns to nine interceptions. Last year, it went 26 to 13 interceptions. And the sacks went from six the year before to 29. Offensive line wasn't as good. But the kid is hanging on to the football too long, trying to make a play to live up to Heisman expectations and to the expectations of his football team, which were pretty high going into the year. Last year, Sam Darnold led all of college football with eight fumbles lost. That is on top of five the previous year. So he lost 13 fumbles, and so he started X games, you know, sort of two-thirds of the season his first time around and then all the games last year. But he lost 13 fumbles because he's just pretty careless with the football. Mm -hmm. He tries too hard. He's one of those kids who wants to run through the brick wall and throw in the rain. He's, he's, the, the makeup is great, but it can be detrimental because he becomes high risk because he's trying too hard to live up. What if I told you that that's a 500 football team unless he had that mentality? That he had to be that risky with the football at times or else they would not have been in football games. If he was out there just to pad his stats, he could have. He absolutely could have. But that team, two years ago when he started the fourth game on, mm -hmm. their only question was quarterback. They were loaded. They had a Dory Jackson. They had a lot of good offensive Juju. linemen. They were, they were Juju. They had some talent around him. Mm -hmm. Last year, it was the exact opposite. No question about the quarterback. Questions everywhere else. I mean, everywhere else. Injuries on the offensive line. Mm -hmm. Their wide receiver core was young, small, not very good, candidly. Yep. Their offense wasn't all that uh, unpredictable. It was very predictable in nature. Yep. You speak to all the defensive coordinators in the Pac-12, they would tell you as such. So I would argue that Sam had to play that way in order to win. To me, he made all of his teammates better. You know, and... He had to go out there and make a jump pass against Texas to win the football game. Other quarterbacks would have just taken the sack and said, no way, I'm not going to make that throw because it got, might look bad. And he was great late against Texas in the overtime. You were, you did that game, yes. right? And yet Texas finished, what, seven and six, as I yeah, recall? Yeah, not a great team. Very good defense. Well, I, I think the thing defense. you'll skip is that when all these guys seem to be, it's not like a John Elway situation. Right where he's head and shoulders above the red. He's like, okay, that's the guy, move on. Or Andrew Luck. Andrew yeah. Luck. Okay, Cam. But when you got all these guys that's bunched up, what separates? We got to be safe, Skip. Mm. You can't, the number okay, one. But, but you're talking about safe off the field, but on the field, do turnovers translate to the National Football League? Yeah, they do. Jameis Winston. Winston. Yeah. Still haven't. Deshaun yeah. Watson threw a lot of interception. Okay, he was tearing the to, league up before to, he got injured. To me, he had a great year his did he stay for his sophomore, sophomore year? So, yes. so sophomore yes. year, second to last year. Year before he left. And then the next year was all about, I just got to get back to Alabama. And I thought he got careless with the football, like in an are we there yet sort of mentality of, I don't really care about these games. I just want to get to Alabama. Was he careless with the football against Alabama in the championship game? He was not. Yeah, we'd had, if we'd had two, we'd have got him. Yeah, but you didn't have two. Yeah. Think, yeah, about, the, think about the last two first-round selections the Browns have made at quarterback. Brandon Whedon was 28. 28. Guys, that's the oldest player ever selected in the first round. They disregarded that red flag, that he, risk. He played right? pro baseball and minor I understand baseball. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, and yeah. I get so that. Drew Hansen. He was 28 years old. Their next first-round selection was Johnny Menzel. Loads of question marks about him, candidly, on and off the field. Mm -hmm. No okay? doubt. So they did not minim minimize risk off the field in those mm -hmm. question marks that you've got to go out there and present to your fan base to me, Sam Donald walks in. He's going to be a leader day one. He's not going to be a d disruption. He's a terrific player. I love Baker Mayfield. I got him going number three you overall do? to the New yeah. York Jets. I love his makeup. Not for Cleveland. Because remember, fit has a lot to do with your success at that position in the National Football League. You, want, you really want Baker in New York? 
I mean, he's the closest thing to Namath that we've seen in a long time. Mm-hmm. Is he not? That, I just think it's that, too that, perfect. That, that, that's, not, that's not a good thing, though. What do you call him, so, Skip? Broadway Baker? Broadway Baker or Mayfield May. does Manhattan. Yeah. yeah. No, okay. He would be. do it. Could yeah, be. I know. That's the problem, no. though. No. He would do it. Okay. Quick stat for you from the organization called Football Outsiders, which okay. has mm-hmm. a quarterback projection mm-hmm. stat from college to pro called Cubase that has been – Pretty deadly accurate over yep, the years. Yeah, they've been really good with yep, that. They've been good. So, guess what? Baker Mayfield on the all-time list is the fourth overall projection to start him in the National Football League. And it's off your college stats, and it helps the longer you start. He started sure. for four years yep. in right. college football. And some at Texas Tech before that. That's what I'm saying. It all, it, it all adds up yep. to a whole bunch of college football starts at an extremely high statistical level. What was it last year? 41 touchdowns to six interceptions. Sure. Led college football and raw QBR both years, the last two years. That's in fact, hard set a record in efficiency both yeah, his, his second to last year and his last year. Did, did I love him late against Georgia in the semifinal? I did not. But first half, he was really good. But the point is, let's go back to this list. So the list of all-timers has Phillip Rivers, Carson Palmer, Donovan McNabb. This is one, two, three on the list. Then Baker's four, Russell Wilson's five, Peyton Manning six, Mariota. It's got Leftwich on here who, who didn't project as well, but he did – he led the Jaguars to the playoffs one year. Beat the Steelers in yeah, Pittsburgh. He yeah, did. that's right. Yeah. He won a ring with the Steelers as the backup mm-hmm. quarterback, but whatever. And then Aaron Rodgers and Ben Roethlisberger. That's the list, and Baker's fourth on it. These are, the, the in order, the projections from the Q base into pro football. Mm-hmm. You know, well, it's been most, pretty, pretty accurate. And most of those guys did what? Played all four years. That's right. Okay, they did. And that helps. That that's the Q base stat based on that. But normally, but normally that yeah. works against you because it's like, well, if you're that good, why are you staying all? Hey, but four that's years? the NBA mentality. Yeah, right. That's my, my Blake Griffin argument. Was, <laughs> wait, he stayed for two years. Why? Why did he have to stay for a second year? Right. I, I fear for Baker that we've seen close to his ceiling. Maybe. Darnold, I can't say that. He's only played for two years. I think that there's even more in the tank there. His upside might be even better than Mayfield. I love both guys. Love both guys. The safer pick is Sam Darnold for Cleveland. Mm. Darnold. Hmm? Yeah. Where's Wentz on that? Wentz gonna be, when they do that thing in five years, it'll be Wentz number one. They didn't evaluate North Dakota State. Oh, that's they right. That's right. That's, that's what it was. That's what it was. <laughs> couldn't make it Wait, there. you talking about the Eagles' backup quarterback? Don't do that, Skip. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do that. Joel, Nick, Nick Joel, Foles, you number bet. 11. You bet. <laughs> Dwayne Wade in no. the playoffs. We'll discuss that next. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. And be sure to check out more of the best clips from Undisputed or go watch a few segments from our other shows on FS1.